In this video, we're gonna share seven tips for cataract surgery. Tips that may not only help you see better after the procedure, but also help reduce your risk of complications. That's today's video, let's take a look. This video was made possible with support from Avanova, a lab-tested and clinically proven lid and lash solution for everyday use. Hello and welcome, this is Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, helping you learn all about the eyes, vision, and finding the best vision products. Now today's video is gonna be all about tips to help you have the most success with cataract surgery. First going over how you can optimize the ocular surface to improve the accuracy of your procedure and reduce complications. And then we'll also share some tips on understanding lens implant options and what type of expectations to have for life after cataract surgery. Tip number one is in fact dry eye management. And that's because before having cataract surgery, your eye doctor is gonna have to take many different measurements of the eye in order to have a good, accurate prescription after the procedure. And if you're somebody who has dry eye syndrome or some form of ocular surface disease, that can affect the measurements for the procedure and hence affect the outcome. In fact, untreated dry eye can even affect how the eye heals. And that's exactly why so many eye doctors do recommend having a thorough dry eye evaluation or at least beginning some form of dry eye treatment in order to get the ocular surface under control before even having those measurements done. Some treatment options that may be recommended are non-preserved artificial tears several times a day. Your eye doctor may even prescribe prescription eye drops to help control inflammation on the surface, such as Zydra, Restasis, or Sequa, just for some examples. Or maybe in-office procedures, such as Lipiflow, Ilux, or IPL may be recommended. Either way, if you have any signs or symptoms of dry eye, it's very important to get that under control because that's gonna result in better visual outcomes and reduce your chances of having worse dry eye symptoms after the procedure. Tip number two is to control and manage blepharitis. Blepharitis is the buildup of skin oils, dead skin cells, and microorganisms along the eyelid margin, which causes eyelid irritation, inflammation, redness, contributes to dry eye disease, and increases the risk of eye infections. Now for the management of blepharitis, that's where Avanova, the sponsor of today's video, comes in. And I'm happy to be working with Avanova because it is an eyelid and eyelash solution that is available without a prescription that I know many leading eye doctors recommend for their patients to start using before cataract surgery. And it's something that I've personally had success with, with cleaning my own eyelids. Avanova is an eyelid-friendly skin disinfectant known as hypochlorous acid, which kills a broad spectrum of bacteria and can successfully help with chronic eye conditions such as blepharitis, dry eyes, meibomian gland dysfunction, and inflammation. It's also quick and easy to apply it just by simply spraying it onto your eyelids or onto a cotton round and then wiping your eyelids, and usually doing this twice a day. And it's nice because it doesn't cause any burning or stinging sensation. And again, many leading optometrists and ophthalmologists recommend this product to their patients, so don't be surprised if your own eye doctor mentions it. But if you do have other questions or want to know more about Avanova specifically, I'll put additional links to their information below the like button. But again, cleaning the eyelids and stabilizing any signs or symptoms of dry eye, those are probably the two best ways that you can take action and help improve that measurements and potential outcomes of your own cataract surgery. And moving on to tip number three is to know your options for cataract surgery. Now, during the procedure, your surgeon will remove a cataract from inside the eye and replace it with a clear plastic implant. And that implant can compensate for any possible glasses prescription that you may have. Just for example, if you're somebody who typically wears glasses, either for farsightedness or nearsightedness, your doctor may be able to compensate for that need for glasses prescription with that implant inside the eye. It's kind of like getting LASIK eye surgery in a way. You may be less dependent on glasses after the procedure. Now, just a few of the options that may be available to you may include first having the eyes both set for seeing things clearly in the distance. That means just walking around, seeing things in the distance, maybe driving. You maybe won't have to be as reliant on wearing glasses or some other form of correction. But unfortunately, these plastic lens implants usually aren't able to flex very well 
and allow you to see up close, so many people in that case will instead just choose to have reading glasses as needed to see things up close. Or maybe be like my father, who doesn't really need glasses for distance, but spent most of his life wearing glasses and just chooses to still wear progressive reading glasses almost all the time so that he can easily be able to read up close when he needs to. Again, that is just the first option, which is to have both eyes set for distance. Another option, which I don't see many people doing, but is that having your eyes set for reading up close. That's usually best for somebody who spends a lot of time reading up close throughout the day or maybe on the computer. And then that person would then in turn you need to use glasses more full time for seeing things in the distance. It's kind of backwards, but I occasionally do have people request it. Not as common, but still possibly an option for you. Sometimes some people will choose to have one eye set for distance, seeing things clearly far away, while the other eye is set more for up close, which we call monovision. There are people who are very successful with having this type of implant put in, but I feel like it's largely being replaced by the advent of trifocal and multifocal implants, which if you're somebody who has a very active lifestyle or just wants as little dependency on having like reading glasses with you at all times, then perhaps having a multifocal implant may be the best option. Again, just some good options to think about before having cataract surgery. That way you have a better understanding of what your options are going ahead. Now, in fact, there are many different lens implants available depending on what option you want. And the technologies are always evolving. So definitely stay tuned for future videos I plan to have where I'll break down these different lens implant options, including their prices, because that also plays a factor in there. Because unfortunately, insurance often doesn't cover specialty lenses uh, such as the multifocal implants. Usually you have to pay out of pocket for those. But again, if you're new here and haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so that you don't miss those future videos. Now, tip number four is to know what to expect. And this is where having a good conversation with your eye doctor comes into play. Because if you have other eye conditions or diseases, you want to know about those and how they may affect your healing and the ultimate visual outcome of the procedure. For example, if you are somebody who has diabetes, then that may affect your healing after the procedure. So instead of just taking one month to fully heal the eye, it may take closer to two or three. Diabetes can also cause a swelling in the back of the eye, and that's something, again, your doctor will have to look for. Or perhaps if you have age-related macular degeneration. In those cases, cataract surgery may still help improve the clarity of your eyesight, but if the retina in the back of the eye is severely damaged, then you wouldn't expect your vision to improve that much even after the procedure. Or if you have a corneal disease or scarring or take any medications that may affect the procedure, then those all can have an effect on how your eye heals and your ultimate visual outcome. So again, having a conversation with your doctor to understand what your risks are, I think it's very important. Now, my last three tips here are just really practical things to keep in mind right before, during, and after the cataract procedure. Number five is to shake your eye drop medications. Specifically, before having cataract surgery, your eye doctor is likely gonna give you several different eye drops to use before the surgery and then after the surgery. And one of those medications is going to be a steroid eye drop, which if you shake that drop beforehand, before using it for about 30 seconds or so, it should work a lot better, give you a lot more oomph out of that medication. Tip number six is to wear your eye shield while going to sleep. After the procedure is done, your surgeon is likely going to put a shield or a patch over your eye, which is usually removed the next day for a post-operative assessment. But I still think it's best to have some form of an eye shield over your eye for usually the next week, just because if you're sleeping, we don't want you to accidentally poke or maybe put pressure onto that eye because it is still healing. But as always, ask your eye doctor what they think is best for you. And my final and seventh tip is that after cataract surgery, if your eyes become red, painful, or you experience worsening vision, you need to contact your eye doctor or eye clinic right away. For the first few days immediately following cataract surgery, we normally expect the eyes and the vision to not be perfect, it's gonna be a little blurry, and maybe the eye will feel a little irritated. But afterwards, over time, that first week, we expect vision to only improve and the eyes to feel better. So at any point, again, if there's redness, pain, or the vision's getting worse, you want to tell your doctor. Thankfully, cataract surgery is very successful and complications are rare, but if it happens, it's something that your doctor is going to want to catch and treat sooner.
But hey, I hope this video really helps you out. And if you are having cataract surgery soon, I wish you nothing but the best success. Let us know in the comment section which of these tips was your favorite. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Again, Dr. Allen here. Keep an eye on it, and we'll talk to you soon.